And yeah, you know, speaking of strategy, I will give you a, a quick look at my ideas or, I mean, the other thing too is, is the things that I put on 11 demands, you know, it, I, it's my site, I put stuff out there, but I do consider it a, um, um, a, a type of, of collaboration because I've, I've been in the, the left space with the savvy show and some other things for, for quite a while now. And I feel like a lot of this is, is a distillation of what's, of, of what's around in what I call like this real left. But here's one concept for an 11 demand strategy. First, construct a list of demands for systemic change. We've been seeing that. Embrace mutual aid and direct action as crucial tools for collaborative support, education, and progress. So when these mutual aids and direct actions are happening, they're connected to the greater movement or campaign and connected to the demands. Make it your mission to educate everyone about the money and corruption, MCDS, money, corruption, demand solutions. Ask every potential candidate and representative, do you support these demands? What are you doing to enact them? If they're not on board, call them out as what they are, corrupt. Provide zero support for them, for these Democrats and Republicans until they start acting, enacting the demands. That means no votes, no money, no praise when they're giving us these crumbs and things. Provide all possible support and aid to third party and independent candidates who embrace the demands. Any serious candidate should already be calling out our current representatives as corrupt. When road, when you get roadblocks, intensify with direct actions, protests, strikes, and so forth, and be relentless about pointing out the real source of our problems, the billionaires, the mega corporations, the top 1.1% versus the rest of us. That is the fight. So, so to that end, Eric, my website is callforcongress.com. There is a donate button there. You should volunteer and sign up for my email list because if you want to see me call out the current corrupt representative in my district, I do not hold back. In fact, I want to hang this whole Boeing debacle around his neck, and I have done so for the last four years because Boeing is the largest employer in my district, and Boeing is also, other than APAC, his largest contributor, so that should tell you something. And he was chair of the Aviation Subcommittee of Transportation. Literally, these problems with Boeing go back 15, 20 years, and he has had an opportunity to correct them, and he has literally looked the, old, the other way. It's not that he hasn't known the problems exist, but Boeing has basically been bribing him to allow them to do manufacture, and uh, you know, it's a deregulation thing. They have been paying yeah, was- to deregulate their industry. I always wanted to know if they ever had OSHA in Washington State. It seems like there's you. nobody, <laughs> they're not doing their job. Is it because Boeing has a federal, has some sort of military grant that they don't have to follow I, no, OSHA I don't think, regulations? I don't think it has to do, it, it's, it doesn't really have to do with OSHA. It's not, it, what it is, is that the FAA, FAA as a regulatory body and the aviation subcommittee as a regulatory body are allowing Boeing to get away. It's not really a worker condition thing. Like workers have been calling it out from the inside because they know how crappy the manufacturer has been lately. Like there have been whistleblowers within Boeing for the last 15 years, right? And they have been trying, but what happens? They get fired. So nobody's following up on that. And there's this court, there's this culture. Take a lead nap in the parking lot. Say again? Or they take a lead nap in the parking lot. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so it's not it's not the workers within Boeing. You know, I don't fault the workers. They're trying to keep a job. But people have been trying to blow the whistle on Boeing for, for, for 15 years. The National Transportation Safety Board, which is our public watchdog on transportation issues, was calling it out as, as far back as 2012. So it's Congress's job to hold the hearings and to make a decision. Well, they did hold hearings back in 2013. Larson was in charge of those hearings, and he took no action at all. And what do we have five years down the line? We have two jets go down and 346 people die. But because they were mostly black and brown people in Asia and Africa, you know, nothing really got done then. And it's amazing to me that six years later, people are going, yeah, people should have, they should have fixed the problem back when those jets went down. And I'm like, yeah, well, I've been yelling about that for five years now. (laughs) So yeah, right there. Yeah, Boeing also, I think, gets passed because they're a big military contractor. I mean, that's the thing. A lot of people think about them as in terms of commercial aircraft, but that is a huge military-industrial well, complex. That's what I was getting yeah. at, is if they can skirt 
they get to skirt some of the uh, safety inspection stuff because they, they, they have military. They have had to on commercial aircraft, though. I mean, they really, you know, they sh they that there should be a separation in the industry. You know, <laughs> there should be a lot of like, things <laughs> because we're talking about public safety here, and that's where the the transportation committee and the, so again, the guy I'm running against, Larson, is the ranking Democrat on transportation, and his his number one contributors are. The defense industry, which includes Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed, and, and Honeywell, and so on, and the fossil fuel industry, and these are all the 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 these are the people who are making money off of the defense industry and the transportation industry. The the it is amazing to me that people when we talk about corruption again. I think I said this at the beginning of the show that the regulatory bodies in Congress are funded. The members are funded by those industries. Like at the very least, that should be banned out, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's gone, you know, incredibly far and we really can't, you know, we, we really don't have a, a government that can regulate these corporations. They're totally no, captured no, no. and we, we can't even come close to, to trusting them. And there's the one other thing I wanted to say is that the reason I bring up like the 11 demand strategy and a strategy like this is that people are, are going to come to to you and to Jill and they're going to say, um, you know, you sound great and whatnot, but what's your strategy for winning? And I think having a strategy that's coherent and like, and that operates like this and saying that we need to do this and inspire millions of people behind us can be, I think, an, an effective answer to that question. I, I Eric, I, I'm promising you I'm taking this to the team and we're going to we're going to discuss this as part of our messaging for sure. And I'm happy to collaborate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. Just in general, I'll, I'll collaborate with anyone who's on the right side of this stuff.